is our IVF series. Uh, today we are going to cover step four, which is uh, reproductive health. So and in this um, topic, we will be covering the effect of these six conditions, uh, reproductive diseases on, uh, on IVF treatment cycle. So uh, we will have a very high level of uh, discussion because we have got only five minutes. So when we actually go into the steps of IVF treatment cycle, we will be covering effect of each of these factors in much more detail. So the first, endometriosis. Endometriosis can significantly impact uh, women's fertility and the IVF treatment cycle because endometriosis can impact ovarian reserve, especially if, um, if you have a large endometrioma, which is an endometriotic cyst in the ovary that can reduce the ovarian reserve. And especially the treatment for endometrioma, like surgical removal of endometriotic cyst, can reduce ovarian reserve even further. And also uh, endometriosis, especially severe endometriosis may cause pelvic adhesions, which means it can reduce the access to the ovaries because ovary may be located much higher up. It may not be, we may, may not be able to see ovaries on ultrasound scan clearly, and we may not be able to access ovaries when we do egg pickup. So the third impact of endometriosis is to implantation. In the severe endometriosis and also adenomyosis may impact implantation uh, significantly. Adenomyosis is where the endometriotic uh, lesion is located inside the uterine wall, which can cause localized inflammation and which can cause uh, reduction in implantation. So next is ovarian cyst. Depending on the type and size of ovarian cyst, it can have a significant impact in uh, IVF treatment cycle. So large endometriotic cysts like endometrioma and also dermoid cysts can significantly reduce ovarian resolve. Again, treatment for this type of endometriotic cysts uh, or ovarian cysts can reduce ovarian resolve even further. So then also in uh, ovarian cysts can uh, reduce, uh, uh, reduce uh, ovarian response to stimulation because simply large ovarian cysts may be occupying most of the space in the ovary where there is no enough space for the follicles to grow, eggs to grow. So also a large ovarian cysts can make it difficult to access ovaries when we do egg pickup because it may displace the ovary, it may cause um, the displacement of ovary where the, the, the ovary is not accessible for egg pickup and also it can cause infection, hence we have to give you antibiotics to reduce risk of infection after egg pickup. Third pathology is hydrosalpines, where you have a collection of fluid inside the tube. This fluid can be toxic to the embryo. So the main effect of hydrosalpines is reduction of implantation because simply this fluid can flush back into the uterus and it can wash away the embryo or it can be detrimental to the embryo. So the patients with hydrosalpines, if it's not treated, have a 50% lesser chance of success in IVF treatment. That's why if you pick up in uh, hydrosalpinges before IVF treatment or during IVF treatment, we recommend to remove hydrosalpinges or the tube before we transfer the embryo. So also large hydrosalpinges may reduce access to the ovary because it may just displace the ovary uh, and may, 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 may make it difficult for us to see the ovary on ultrasound scan or um, during pick, pickup. So uh, next pathology is uterine fibroids. Unfortunately, uterine fibroids are fairly common. 10 to 15% of women have a uterine fibroids um, between the age of 35 to 39. So there are three different types of uterine fibroids. First one is subserous fibroids. They have very um, minimal in impact uh, on fertility and the uh, IVF treatment. Second type is intramural fibroid, where a fibroid is located in the middle of the uterine wall. And the third type is submucosal fibroid. So intramural fibroids, if they're large, uh, if they're um, ca causing distortion of the cavity, can, they, they can cause um, a problem with implantation. They can reduce the implantation of embryo, and also they can displace the uterus and may make it difficult to access the uterus for ultrasound scan during IVF or egg pickup. So, and submucosal fibroids have a significant impact on uh, IVF treatment, uh, mainly because they cause reduced implantation. Uh, because fibroids do not have any blood vessels, if embryo simply implants on top of uh, fibroid, it cannot grow its blood center. Usually, you have a failed uh, embryo transfer or um, or um, biochemical pregnancy or early miscarriage. So, um, hence, the patients who have a, a submucosal fibroid. 
um, where the fibroid is distort distorting the cavity and protruding into the cavity, it's best to remove the fibroid or treat the fibroid before embryo transfer. So next pathology is uterine polyp. The uterine polyp is a benign growth inside the uterine cavity. So a main uh, impact of uterine polyp in IVF is reduction of implantation because uterine polyp sitting inside the cavity can cause localized inflammation and it can cause a contraction of uh, muscles in, uh, inside the uterus. And also embryo simply can implant on top of the polyp where it can, can doesn't have access to blood vessels and simply it can fail to, to devolve. So yeah, so main impact of uterine polyp is uh, failed implantation and early miscarriages. So and small polyps appears not does not, do not act, uh, impact implantation significantly. Any um, polyp more than one centimeter can have a significant impact and it's recommended uh, to remove the polyp before embryo transfer. So last pathology is uterine abnormalities. So most common of one uh, of these is uterine septum. And if you imagine uterus as a, as a room, uh, in uterine septum, you have got a dividing uh, wall um, just hanging from the ceiling. Uh, so this is the uterine septum. So the most important thing to know about the septum is the septum as a connective tissue, unlike uterine wall where you have a muscle layer and blood vessels. In the septum, you don't have any blood vessels. It's just simply connective tissue. So if embryo tries, if implants here, it cannot grow its blood center. So usually you have a, a, a failed embryo transfer or biochemical pregnancy, maybe early miscarriage. So hence it's recommended to remove the septum before, uh, before embryo transfer. Also you try the septum, de depending on the extent of the septum, may cause uh, early miscarriages and late miscarriages or in premature labor. Yeah. And other types of uterine abnormalities are bicornate uterus and uterine didelphus. Um, so bicornate uterus doesn't usually cause any implantation problem, but it can cause um, late miscarriages or premature labor. Uterine didelphus also um, have a more um, impact in, in pregnancy. Usually it doesn't cause significant uh, problem with, uh, with implantation. So um, this is um, all the six uh, commonly observed conditions uh, which we should be aware of and treat um, and before or after uh, egg pickup, before embryo transfer. So um, yeah, this is the end of my presentation. Um, thanks for your time. I will catch you next time. Thank you.